We can't see it, but we know it's there. Wind. It gets things going. Makes things fly. If we could see it, we'd see that moving air acts a lot like water. Rippling, swirling, past corners and edges. Air forced past edges and through small openings creates regular rapid swirls, which cause the surrounding air to start vibrating. We hear these vibrations as a whistling sound. Another way to put these air swirls to work is to split them with an edge. When the air is directed just right, the edge of the bottle causes the swirls to wave and push on the air inside the bottle. The air in the bottle vibrates in response, which we hear as sound, an edge tone. The smaller the air chamber, the higher the pitch. A row of tubes of different lengths can be used to play different musical notes. Pan pipes. This simple instrument is found among peoples throughout the world. An open tube will also produce a sound. The longer the tube, the lower the pitch. Opening holes along the side has the same effect on the sound as if we had shortened the tube. By covering different holes, a tune can be played. It's like having many panpipe tubes in one. Changing the blow hole to the side of the tube makes the instrument more comfortable to hold. And we have a flute. To play a simple scale, a few finger holes are enough. But to play more notes, many more finger holes must be provided. Unfortunately, we just don't have enough fingers to go around. So a system of levers and keys was invented that allows each finger to reach several hole covers at once. The flute belongs to a family of instruments called the woodwinds. This group includes the oboe, the clarinet, the bassoon, and a more recent member, the saxophone. Each one of these instruments uses a tube of air. The air tube is made much longer in the bassoon so it can reach lower notes. Each one also has openings in the tube controlled with keys and covers but only the flute uses a fixed edge in its mouthpiece. The other woodwinds use edges that move, reeds. Thin, vibrating blades called reeds are shaped from a special reed plant that grows best in southern France. Pardon, monsieur, that is an insult. We do not grow weeds in France. No, no, not weed, reed. Reed? Oh, that is different, monsieur. We have the best reeds in the world. Our reeds are magnifique. Well, it is true. Musicians from all over the world prefer reeds made from cane grown in the hot sun of southern France. After the cane is harvested and dried, suitable sections are cut. A piece of cane is split. A section is shaved to the strong outer part of the cane. It's folded and trimmed to just the right shape. The reed is tied to a tube that will later fit into the end of the instrument. The reed is cut at the fold, carefully scraped, and it works.
New reeds must be made frequently, so musicians get very good at making their own. Let's take a close look. The thin edges of the two reeds form an opening at the end. As the reeds vibrate against each other, regular puffs cause the air in the tube to start vibrating too, which we hear as sound. The oboe and bassoon use these double reeds, but the clarinet and saxophone use a single reed in their mouthpieces. The single reed is placed over an opening at the end. It vibrates against this opening to let the puffs of air through. Double reed, single reed, edge tone, woodwinds. Each one with its own special tone, its own special tone color. If we imagine the cool tone of the flute as, say, blue, what color might describe the oboe? Whatever you think. Green, perhaps? And the clarinet. Yellow? The bassoon's heavier tone might suggest a rich, deep red. These four woodwinds cover a wide range of tone, color, and pitch. But if the highest note is needed, there's always the flute's little sister, the piccolo. And would you believe that the bassoon has a big brother? Meet the contra bassoon. When the lowest notes are called for, he delivers. Flute? Oboe, clarinet, bassoon, a quartet of woodwind instruments. Now, if we can just find some musicians to play them for us. Ah, here we go.